Hello everybody, this is Mr. Storm. In this video, I am gonna give you a quick tour of a Canvas course. We're not gonna to go too deeply into any of these subjects. I just want you to see what some of these buttons do um, and some of the options that you have available to you as an instructor to customize your course. So let's take a look at this Exploring Computer Science template, which is roughly, I'd say, maybe 50% of the way complete. I'm building this course for next school year, and so it's not quite finished, but it's almost there. Um, up here in the left-hand corner, we have a hamburger menu, and we have the shortened name of the course. This hamburger menu, if you click it, it will expand and collapse this side panel menu here. Now, this side panel menu is completely customizable by you as the course instructor. I'll show you how to do that in another video. Here in the center, we have our uh, home page. This is the first page students are going to see whenever they come to this class. Um, I have uh, a, a header image here so they know which class they're in. I have a couple of buttons that do different things. I have a button that pulls up a pop-up menu with my picture and my email, um, a button that takes them to the syllabus, announcements, grades, so on and so forth. Down here, I have some collapsible accordion menus that they can use to learn more about the class, how to enroll as a concurrent enrollment student for this course, and different units that we're learning in that class. For example, if we're on unit one and we're learning about artificial intelligence, they can go down to lesson four, artificial intelligence, click the link, and it will take them to the lesson on artificial intelligence. Perfect. So that's essentially how I have my course set up. Um, over here, and, and this is completely editable, by the way, this page, you can edit it and do all kinds of things to it. Your course is going to look different from mine, um, and it's completely customizable here by clicking edit. Over here, I can check my, uh, my page history. I can send this page to something. Um, I can send it to a specific area. I could copy this page to a specific area. I don't really use these features too often, but they are there. Over here in the top right hand corner, we have student view. If you click this button, it will show you what your course looks like to a just a basic student in your class. Notice that a bunch of those links went away over on the side. Um, that's because I only have certain things I want my students to be able to see. Um, notice that over here, all of this content changed. Now I have a list of all of the things that I have to do in this class, or at least the next six or seven assignments that I have to complete. I can still interact with the course content. I can still meet my instructor, all of those things. Um, I can go in and start working on assignments if I really wanted to. But this is what it looks like for a student signing into your class. Now, you can reset the student, meaning you this pretend student that you're, that you're messing around in, any assignments that you've created or uh, completed, or any quizzes that you've taken, you can reset the scores for those, or you can just simply leave student view, which is what I'm doing. Anytime you have that purple barrier, that purple border around your, your uh, browsing session in Canvas, that means you're in student view. Over here, we have course status. We can see that this course is unpublished, meaning students will not have access to this course until I publish it. I don't want students to be able to interact with any of the content until I've published the course. Down here, I can import existing content. Let's say there's some content from another class that I want to bring in here. I can click import existing content. I can choose the content style that I want if it's a Canvas course meaning it's something that I've already built in Canvas in a previous course. Click there, type the name of the course I'm looking for. Find the course I want. Let's say I want to go from this 2022 version of Exploring Computer Science. I can choose to select all content or specific content. I can adjust the due dates and click import. That's something we're going to talk about in more detail in a later video, but that option is right there. I can also import content from Commons. Canvas Commons is a feature where teachers can publish their own courses for other teachers to use. For example, I've actually published a UMA design template course for teachers at UMA to use. You can actually go in here and import this design template into your 
fresh course, which will give you access to those accordion menus that I've created and, and all of those things. But if you're looking for a specific, let's say, uh, game development fundamentals, let's say I want to create a course on game development, I can go in here and find game development fundamentals. Um, it has 81 downloads and 12 favorites. It's probably a good course and I can import that course. I can get a preview of some of the things they're doing in that class and I can import all the content into my course if I wanted to. So that's one feature that you have available to you. Now I need to get back to my course. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to go back to my dashboard and find the course itself. Okay. We can choose our home page. So this page here is actually a canvas page that I've indicated I want to be my home page. But you can have the course activity stream be your home page. You can have course modules, the assignments list, or the syllabus be your home page if you'd like. I can view the course stream, which is going to show me all the things that people are doing in the course. There's a discussion post that I can look at. Um, but there's not a lot of content or not a lot of activity in this course because it's an unpublished course. I can create a new announcement. I can look at analytics. I can create an analytic report based on uh, user um, uh, activity within this course. Analytics are really helpful when determining whether or not a student is engaging in the content. Um, so there, there are all kinds of things you can do with analytics. I can view my course notifications, seeing which uh, change the settings for notifications. We covered that in a previous video, um, but these are notifications specifically for this course itself. All right. Now, the last thing I want to show you is modules. Modules is how most teachers organize their content in Canvas. So you can go to modules and create a new module and add content to it. I organize my modules by lesson. For example, the first lesson in this class is about computer hardware. I have a discussion topic associated with that lesson. I have a, a lesson which will, you know, basically teach you about computer hardware. And then I have a an assignment um, where they will build a virtual computer. And then I have a quiz, which is a quick five question uh, uh, exit ticket quiz with five questions randomly pulled from a question bank related to this lesson. So this module is one day in class. Now, some teachers use modules to cover entire units. Some teachers use modules to cover weeks. Some teachers use modules to cover an entire term. It's completely up to you. However, you want to set up modules. The important thing to note, though, is that over here on the side, we have some uh, green uh, check boxes. This means that that content is published. If I were to uncheck that and it's a grayed out circle with a line through it, that means that court that content is not published and students will not be able to access it. Now, let's say I have all this content published, but the module itself is unpublished, then students will not be able to access anything in that module. So you want to make sure that your modules are all published if you want students to have access to them. If we scroll down here a bit, I have some modules that don't have any content in them or have only one or two things in them. I could technically unpublish these modules and students won't even see them in their module view. They won't see any of the content inside of those modules either. And so um, they won't get distracted with content that's not completely finished. Now you can create new modules by clicking this plus module button. And you can also lock modules. So let's say I'm creating, let's create a test module. And let's say I want to lock it until a certain date. I'm going to lock it until June 21st. And let's say, so that means that students won't be able to access that module until that specific time. Let's say I, I want a prerequisite as well, meaning they have to complete a specific module before they can move on to this. So I want them to complete the unit one final before they can move on. That will set those restrictions so that the module will not be viewable until a certain date and they have to complete all of unit one module, the unit one final module, which is right up here. 
they have to complete that content before they can even see this module. Okay. So you can set that up in that way. I'm going to delete this really quickly. All right. You can click view progress, which will show you your students progress through the modules as they're accessing modules. It's a pretty handy feature. Oh, <laughs> I clicked the X and I clicked back. <laughs> You can also collapse all. Collapse all will collapse all of the content in your modules. It makes it easier to scroll through and find what you're looking for. Or you can expand all so you can see everything in your modules. All right, that's pretty much it. I think um, for this, we will talk about uh, course settings and design theory of how to build certain things in a Canvas course um, a little bit later. But for this video, I think this is enough. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you next time.